Right. Okay, good morning, everybody. Those of you who might not have been able to see what I put in the chat, I'm going to uh, speak it out loud. Please, please, please uh, come on video. Please come on video. Um, if, you know, if the, uh, hopefully, you know, there's a real reason why you can't be there, but if you could be on video, please let us see each other. It just changes the experience. God knows, uh, talking to black uh, boxes <laughs> is not uh, all that inspiring, and I just keep wanting to see you all. So look what we have here. We have Lori Carlson on the beach. <laughs> She's not suffering. We have the we have Antonia and I guess Frank in the background somewhere tuning in from Mexico. What a wonderful thing that is. We have Tony who's driving and paying attention to the Sunday celebration. We have our beloved uh, Mo here, Mo and Mark. And Mo, uh, just let everybody know, let's send her an extra loving healing, uh, loving and healing because she just came out of surgery and she's now the bionic woman. So bless you, Mo. May your healing continue. It's good news that you're here. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm so glad to see it. And who is the galaxy? Oh, oh, that's uh, the Capiello's at Edna's house. Hey, there's a whole group having breakfast. <laughs> so just to let you know, if you want to have the minister in your house for Sunday morning, all you have to do is provide breakfast. If you provide breakfast, I'll come over and I'll do the Sunday celebration from your house. I'm just putting that out there. Yes, I can be bought and not with a lot of money either. So, um, so good to see everybody. Um, it is a gorgeous day. We are closing in on August. And I want to tell you just a couple little things before I go into the meditation. Today we're going to do something different. It's called Pearls of Wisdom because it's the point in the textbook where he, uh, it's the summary. And Barbara mentioned that during her prior to her meditation. So, but what I'm going to want to do today, and everybody put on your thinking caps. Remember when you were a kid and what, what, what was it Wonder Woman? Was it a... Um, that, that cartoon show, or not the cartoon, the show in the morning. And she'd say, put on your thinking cap. And um, anybody know what I'm talking about? Remember the... Was that romper what? room? Romper room! Romper room. Yeah, I don't have my my looking glass, but I remember put on, put on your thinking caps. Because what I'm going to be requesting of you today is your participation. I'm asking you today to identify and share with us the pearls of wisdom that you have learned from this past year so far in, in being here on Sundays, studying the science of mind. Please keep it a uh, laser focus on the science of mind and from what you've garnered and not from some video you saw or TED talk or whatever those other things are what you know i want to know because the science of mind is a practice it's practical and it's so important that we learn how um how to apply it you know activate it in our lives and then benefit from it so be ready for that for when i do my talk but um i do want to say to you all you have hung in there you have hung in there through the virtual world and um, we have been, the, the board has been in conversation. We have a whole team of people now that are constantly looking for a new location. On that team is Neil and Ty and Henry, Edna, uh, Elaine DeMars, and myself. Oh, and Bill Sarnowski. And so we are communicating with people but I'm also here to tell you that I'm, I'm really aware that we're making, we're making these plans because it is our, our guess that you want to be in company. You want to be in physical company. Truth be told, right now, I don't know what we're looking at. I don't know what we're looking at. So I just want to say that to you. We are not 
not getting together because there's no effort behind the scenes. There's effort. But trying to read the signs of COVID and the new and uh, the new protocols coming down and the wave of whatever, um, we also want to keep everybody perfectly safe. So we're we're kind of you you probably haven't heard me say this too often, but we're kind of at the mercy of what's going on. I mean, le even legally, it's not you know. Uh, we're just legally at the mercy of what's happening and wanting to keep you safe. So please, I'm, I want to request two things. Keep the board and what we're doing in your prayers. Support us emo spiritually so that we make really good decisions on your behalf. And let's all, for God's sake, treat that this thing comes to an end. That it's just not in our existence, in our experience anymore. Uh, and in order to do that, you want to still make your own smart, wise decisions. But let's, let's do whatever we can to make those smart, wise decisions based on faith and not on fear. Okay, let's, you know, let's do the best we can with all of that. So, okay. So what I'd like to ask you to do right now is to stop, you know, get settled and just stop moving for a couple of minutes so we can move into our own space. I'm going to guide you in a meditation. So close your eyes, if you will. Close down your activity. Sit nice and tall and to be in a receptive posture. Settle your breathing. And as your breathing settles, let your body settle. If you can, really stop moving around just for a couple minutes and sink inside into your inner landscape. And be easy. Let your breathing slow down. Let your body settle. Let your breathing slow down and let your body settle. As it settles, be aware that from this still calm place, from this beautiful, still, calm place, you are more empowered, able to make decisions based on wisdom. Let yourself right now touch all the resources inside that afford you that wisdom, the calm, the intuition, your faith, and just be at ease. Now while in here, take a minute, if you will, to do a mental emotional inventory, a very brief inventory. And while you're taking the inventory, notice things that you have learned that have transformed and uplifted your life. 
notice to things that have transformed and uplifted your life. And I'm going to give you a minute to do that. Taking inventory in this way is like counting your blessings. So take note and be ready to share when we come out of meditation. Take a few breaths from your upper chest, breathing life and vitality back into your body temple. So, welcome back everybody. And, um, there are numerous people I can't see, so I'm not, you know, if you're going to want to talk You'll have to unmute yourselves uh, when you're ready. And um, just looking at the messages there. So here's the thing. The science of mind is a practice and it's practical. Its applications are far reaching. And what I've noticed about life is that sometimes we um, immerse ourselves in a certain practice and to the degree that we don't quite notice that we've learned something because it becomes who we are. Many, many years ago, I can remember one time I had uh, one of my nieces one day, uh, I, I, we were visiting, it was a holiday or something, and she started talking to me about positive thinking. And I looked at her and I hadn't thought about that term in a long time. And I thought, why is she talking to me about positive thinking? You know, thinking I'm like the queen of this stuff, right? But what happened was it had sunk so deeply into me. It was like, it's like that experience of the fish in water. You're looking for the water, but they're in the water. They don't know they're in the water. And so it's very important that we learn to take, um, that, that, we, that we learn to take stock. Because if you don't take stock, you can't appreciate what you've learned as much. So this is our day to, to uh, I mean, I'm happy to talk, but my preference is to hear from you to hear what specifically you have learned. What, how have you learned to turn your mind around? How have you learned to go past something? And we are, again, speaking very specifically about the science of mind, just to get us all on the same page. Kathy King. Good morning, friend. Good morning. Uh, the list I have started with Ality, then Alcoholics Anonymous, Science of Mind, and the latest edition is Qigong, which has been very helpful to me. And all of it fits together in a very cohesive way. It has helped me, strengthened me, and I'm very grateful. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, I'm going to just to, to just to set the tone a little bit clearer. I'm asking about specific science of mind qualities or skills or principles. Just so you know, Brian, please go ahead. For me, I would say, and as Neil uh, reminded us this morning in the SOME class, it's all about consciousness. 
that to me is the key principle. <clears throat> Even <clears throat> recently, uh, I have noticed this summer what happens when my consciousness is in different places. If I am in an unconscious place and I see things unfolding in a way that I don't exactly want, I now know that it is my consciousness and I can take deliberate steps to shift that. And sometimes that's even a challenge. And sometimes I notice when it's a challenge and I know that I can work a little harder, refocus my mind, really get into principle and then watch that shift. But I think one of the greatest things is that now I'm at that place where I, I know when I'm falling out of consciousness and I know that I can stop it. Even if, even if it's a challenge, even if it takes me a while, eventually I get there and just, you know, it's, I, I've watched miracles happen. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. It is all about consciousness and that's, that's a really tough concept for a lot of people. So by the way, you can also use this time to ask a question. As long as it's about science, the application of science of mind, you can also use this time to ask a question. So who else, who else would like to share? Marilyn. Okay. Coming to us from the island. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I appreciate this year, I love going through the book with the science of mind this year. I love going back to basics. And I try, I'm not always successful, but I do but go right through treatment where I feel something going on that I'm not happy with. And what I've come to realize, and it seems like, you know, I realize it and, and sort of, oh yeah, of course it is like that. Everything around me is a condition. The only constant in my life is my connection with spirit. That spirit is always there. And that makes the condition somehow change that makes it more agreeable to my situation, however that is. And I find that more and more happening, even in the little things. Yeah, beautiful, thank you, thank you. You just uh, um, spoke to something, one of the pieces I wanted to read from the textbook, but I wanna allow people to share more. Thank you, Marilyn. Mm -hmm. Does it, let me, well, let me ask a question. Is it clear to everyone here what, what that means? What is Brian talking about? What is Marilyn talking about? Well, somebody want to give me, give a stab? Like, so we're really clear because we could say that. And if we haven't really unpacked what that means, you could read in a lot of different things into that. Anybody want to give a stab at what that means? I'll try. Good. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. <laughs> Good um, to see you. For me, uh, I guess, you know, with this consciousness thing, uh, one way I can see it is that at any one time, I have access to this extreme power. Uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, a lot of times during the day, I'm not thinking about it. And then something goes out of whack then I think, okay, it's treatment time. And that's where I have access to this power within me that's within everybody around me and trying to just tap into that for to get my clarity back, to get my healing thoughts back. So, uh, and it's always there all the time, the veil. And uh, I guess, you know, a perfect example would be of what happened to Antonia, which happens to us a couple of times you know, that were some serious things, but something that was even mild, more mild mannered. And I'll let Antonia uh, share, share it with hers. Oh, well, oh, hi. Can you see me? We're having a little trouble yeah. with our computer yeah, here. No, we can see you. It's all good. Okay. Um, so, um, go ahead. They can oh, see you. Okay. Um, so I did a treatment yesterday when I was in a, I was in a bad space and um, it was really tough for me to turn to treatment, but I realized that I was not in the consciousness that I wanted to be in. So I realized that I had to change that. 
And um, I did a treatment. It was a little broken up, but I went through the steps. I really um, got in touch with the fact that I am one with spirit. And I really focused on that through my treatment. I tried to really focus on raising my vibration. And I did the treatment. I affirmed what I wanted to have um, to be in my life presently. And um, I got through my treatment as bad a state as I was in. And um, everything, uh, it was kind of a miracle, but everything changed really miraculously afterwards. Um, I was expecting a, a package delivery that wasn't coming and it came. I was um, having trouble with some music that I was hearing and it turned off. I, my own state was not good and it raised, I felt it rising up. I felt myself rising up. And so I thought to myself that that's the power. That's the power of consciousness and that's the power of treatment. So that's what it means to me. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Oh my God, thank you. So, so get what she did. Basically she surrendered. She surrendered everything over to the one the one that is everywhere present, the thing that is everywhere present, because I don't want you to get caught up in if you don't, you know, whatever you call it, you know, you don't have to call it any one thing, but the idea that you're aware, and I mean, this is quantum physics at this point, folks, this is not, this is not a mystery without a, a without understanding anymore, that the consciousness that is, or the spirit that is, is just so everywhere. We are living in this space. We are living in it. We are never outside of it. Um, I, want, I do want to read one paragraph to you from the summary. This is on page, um, well, let me see which one I want to do. All right, on page um, uh, 393, paragraph three. The invisible essence of mind is substance. The invisible essence of mind is substance. It is substance. You, 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 you got to catch that. That is an unformed self and energy. It is energy plus intelligence. Intelligence is conscious energy working upon unformed sus substance in accord with law. When man makes a demand upon himself or upon the universe, which flows through the self, he is making a demand upon original mind and original energy. Thus, his demand causes original mind and energy to produce certain specific things for him. This is a new creation produced by the same creative force or energy that produces all things. The mind that man uses to conceive new ideas is the original mind of God. There are not two minds, but one mind. The universal and the individual is one, are now one in essence. Any apparent difference is in degree only. So here's the thing. When we want something that we think we don't have, when we want to change, when we want greater health, when we want great, greater abundance, whatever that thing is, whatever your desired outcome is, the most important thing for you to do is what I call just managing, and I'm saying it that way specifically, managing the gap. The gap between I want and I have. Now, I want is a questionable term within metaphysics. I understand that. But at some point, we uh, Antonia started out, she wanted to experience a different state of mind. Now, she got a, an immediate, an immediate download. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to testify that when people come for treatment, and my practitioners here will attest to this, when people come for treatment, whether it's health or abundance or a new job, it is, I'm just going to say it's rare so that I don't, so you don't feel like I'm just exaggerating all over the place. It is rare that it doesn't demonstrate. It is rare. The people I treat for, 
benefit or benef benefit from it. The people I treat for heal. This is not about me. This is about the presence of God as me. So, but where we get in the way is we let our fear creep in. Once that treatment ha happens, we let fear get in the way. We let doubt get in the way. We think it's not fast enough. So your job and my job is to treat and trust. Treat, trust, treat, trust. Because you can interrupt it. Because God's mind is your mind, which is God's mind, which is your mind. So if you can interrupt it by questioning it, by doubting it, by looking back at the evidence of less than, or looking at the evidence of the pain and the suffering. So your job and my job is to manage that gap in between the, the spoken treatment and the realization from it, some things will be immediate. God bless Antonia that she had that experience. Sometimes it could be hours or days or weeks or months, depending on what it is. So your job and my job between those that space is to sing, is to dance, is to draw, is to read, is to play, is to get out in the woods, is to trust, is to tell somebody you love them and to be a, a vessel for good and beauty so that you're so busy demonstrating and creating and activating the you know love that you don't have time to question. You don't have time to doubt. Am I clear? Tr treat and trust. So that's my thing about managing the gap. Any other? I'd love to have some other people share. Go ahead, Tony. So um, I have to be very careful and, and uh, shorten mine because there's just so much. Um, first, many years ago, before I was in this teaching, I made up my mind that I wanted to create the life that I wanted to live, that I wanted to be um, causative. And then um, I was introduced to the teaching. And of course, you know, I studied and um, I took my um, ministerial training and instead of doing my orals, I left the the teaching because of what i experienced and then um a minister friend of mine told me um when reverend michelle was opening her center now it's important because i i wasn't comfortable with the, the way things were done at centers and I terribly miss music, okay? And so then I come into a center that is a place where music is just so important, where Reverend Michelle has the vision for music. And interestingly enough, I had met Richard a hundred years ago. He was playing with John at the time and I, I was dating John's brother. I didn't know Richard, he was a guy across at the table. I had met Ty at the Jazzmobile. And what are the chances of us coming together in this center, okay? I had wanted to um, be causative and create the life that, that I wanted to live. And, and I wasn't connected as a practitioner. Everything was in the head and that didn't work for me. And I come into a center where Reverend Michelle is about the love, about feeling things and connecting with your feeling. And then me being a practitioner, that just took off because that was the missing piece. That was the piece that I needed, okay? And then um, you talk about um, demonstrations. I, I could share so many demonstrations, but just recently, so I'm doing I'm doing a healing circle last week, and one of the things we do in the healing circle is before we begin, we clear ourselves. We clear anything that might be in the way. And when I did that, I treated about clearing something that 
basically has been a problem for me all of my life, as long as I can remember. And me being in the way of, it being in the way of me trusting spirit, okay? And I can't tell you exactly because it's confidential, but I treated for this to be healed, for it to be released, for it to be resolved, for me to have clarity. And I, I don't know if it was five minutes or 15 minutes later, not longer than that, okay? Somebody said something and my mind went, whoa, and everything clicked and connected into place and I got it all my life. I have struggled with this and not being able to trust spirit because of this. And I had a huge breakthrough. Now, do I still have pieces to put together? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But I'm telling you my entire life, I struggled with it. And in a few moments, demonstration. So that's my share. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God, that's fantastic. I'm, when, I, when I get you privately, I'm gonna wanna ask more about that. <laughs> It's I, confidential, I you. confidential. Uh, well, I followed your journey for almost 20 years now. I'm real interested. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Mo, you had your hand up, honey? One of the things that I'm um, recognizing, because I'm, I'm, I was really looking at those things that have become so um, ingrained that I wouldn't necessarily see it as an aside. And uh, a big one for me is I start all self, um, uh, what do I want to, in any self practice with gratitude. And it's so automatic, I don't see it as gratitude anymore. Sometimes gratitude is just, thank you for getting me to this this uh, way of knowing, thank you for this education, thank you for this you know, enlightenment or this inspiration or whatever it is, but it can be treatment, it could just be a, a quick self um, forgiveness, whatever. It all begins with gratitude for me, that's it. Beautiful, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, that's something I've been doing during, during my meditations down by the lake. And uh, it's one of the favorite things of the people in attendance now. They just love having a gratitude practice. Um, does anyone else want to share real quick? Uh, Neil, go ahead, honey. Well, I don't know if you want to address this now, but we have a number of different people talking about prayer and treatment. And it came up this morning about how significantly different our type of prayer and treatment is than other prayer and other treatment that, okay. you know, and, and you have such a um, wonderful way of explaining that, that the power in our treatment isn't just asking for something. So maybe I just, if you could say a few words to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I will, I'm happy to do that. And it's funny because the other day, um, some of you might know I have a I have uh, launched a coaching program and not everybody within the coaching program is a practitioner or a, you know, a science of mind person. There's a variety of people. And so we were talking about, you know, was it necessary to pray for clients? And I said, no, absolutely not. It, that's an extra, an addition, a plus, but it's not necessary. And I wanna explain why it's not necessary to give you the information that Neil's asking for. Within any, if you, if I were to diagram right now, if I were to diagram um, prayer and its elements, spiritual mind treatment and its elements, affirmations and the, the value of affirmation, the elements that are valuable in affirmations. And I started to Pick away the things that are unnecessary, but the things that run true for all of them. It's like, uh, I'm gonna digress for a second. Back in the day when I couldn't, I never, you know, when I was young and, and uh, a young mom and I wanted to learn how to expand my cooking. 
what I started doing is I started inviting people over my house once a month and I put together a menu of things I didn't know how to make. Now, what I would do is I would pick out, I would like maybe a bouillabaisse, base, but instead of just making a bouillabaisse base from one recipe, I would look at all the necessary components that makes a bouillabaisse base a bouillabaisse. base. And then I'd notice the extras, what this chef did with that and what this chef, and then I would decide but I had the main ingredients, okay? Now come to prayer, the main ingredients, the absolute required ingredients are two. I know you might think they're five because of five-step treatment or seven because of seven-step treatment, but I'm telling you it's two. One is where are you going? What do you want? What do you want to accomplish? Whatever that is. Is it a thing you want to buy or do or become? So even if you want to become more audacious in your life, you need to know where you're going and you need to have a passionate investment in that demonstration. Those are the only two elements that are absolutely required to move you into that place of receptivity for this thing. But hear me, you must be moved. Those of you who, might, and, and, and I've taught a lot of different people over the years, if you are a wordsmith because you love words, words alone will never do it. But words are very important because words are an indication of your, of your psyche and your belief system. Now, they don't cause it, but they are an indication of it. So you do want to use language that benefits you, but you want to, you want to make sure that the language that you use doesn't distract you from the outcome. But you cannot do this without moving yourself and creating the vibration because we are living in a vibratory universe. And, and Einstein, I, I just read something the other day, I don't remember what it was. He was just, everything is vibrating. So how we vibrate something toward us is we have to generate that feeling and vibrate at that level of receptivity. So if I could say to you, yeah, life is good and yep, uh, I feel good and I, I, you know, I, I want more money in my life. You're probably not going to believe me. There's not a lot of investment there. But if I say to you, hey, folks, I'm done with struggle. I am fully ready to live full out, attracting income from places known and not known, from sources known and not known. I don't care how it comes. I don't care when it comes. But I am now a receptive vehicle. And the vehicle of this Michelle, of this I am, receives abundance above and beyond anything I've ever known. Now I've generated a vibration. You get that? You must generate a vibration. You don't have to do it as loud or annoyingly as I did, but you must generate a vibration. And that's because we don't ask for anything that's outside of us. Nothing is outside of us. We are treating to accept, allow, and receive that which already exists on some plane. You can't get something out of nothing. So if you receive it, it must already exist but it exists on a plane and an existence that you and I just don't have conscious access to. Am I clear? Any questions about that? Because this is, this is kind of important, folks. Even if you haven't learned to confidently do the steps of treatment, God is the presence, the God is the presence of all that is everywhere present. I am one with it. I declare my health and my wholeness. Thank you, God, for this, and so it is. If you haven't gotten that down and you're lacking the confidence, all you need is to let go and to allow the presence to be who you are. This entire book says you are God. God is you. Consciousness is you. Yeah. Um, so you are 
There is no outside. There is no outside. There is no, there is no wanting for something because everything that you want avails itself to you. Yes, Donald, yes. Questions, thoughts, other sharing? Richard, please. Thank you. Uh, I just want to address this as a young artist taught by my grandmother. My grandmother would have loved this teaching. She'd have, she'd have been up in here so hard, <laughs> I can't tell you. She taught me as a youngster that the greatest gift an artist has is the ability of transmutation of energy. That's what she, she told me that as a teenager. And I didn't understand fully what it meant. Um, but uh, becoming an artist and becoming an actor and becoming a musician, I learned what that meant. Because even in acting school and in, 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 uh, in, in Juilliard, as, as actors, we were taught that we could, as performers, we could, t we could tell lies without punishment. And um, there's a truth to that, but this teaching has turned that around for me. Um, I say, I don't say we can tell lies without punishment. I say we can actually become what we are not. Um, and that's what, uh, that's what it's done for me. Allowed me to, in my playing and in my prose and in my poetry, to become and not just to say the words. And you so eloquently put it, words are important, but it's not the meaning. I love language, as you all know, and I use words, and, and words make me happy. <laughs> That's all, and I use them because they are a power that uh, allows me to transmute energy. So thank you, Michelle, for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak on that, and that's what it means to me. And my grandmother would have loved this stuff. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you. So, um, oh God, my mind just went to so so many places. Um, but I want I want to keep giving you the opportunity. Anyone else have a comment, a statement, a question, a sharing? What have you learned? What have you learned? Tell me just one thing, one principle, one principle. I'm afraid if I talk, I'm going to fill up the space. So, um, hi, this is, an, this oh, is okay. a, hi, hi. This is Anita yeah. here, looking very uh, ruffled, but I just want looking to Looking beautiful. Um, I'm, I'm looking ruffled because I'm here in this uh, place with a swimming pool uh, in our backyard. And it all started with me talking about how I really feel the need for immersion and and how my what my regular meditation I I bring myself underwater every day and I thought oh I would just want to feel that for real and um, and then I was visiting a friend a month ago and they were moving out long story I had an opportunity to rent this house with a salt water heated pool. And the reason why I tell you this story is that, yeah, it's a demonstration, but you know, the first thought when it became clear that this is a demonstration was fear. Like, oh my, oh, like shit, this is real. You know, like I, I, it was everything all at once. It was like this cascade of emotions of <sighs> the power of it, the belief that was always there, but I guess not really. And, oh, it was this cascade of emotions and sorting through all that. And then saying yes, because, you know, the thing I realized too is you, the work, it shows up and then the real work begins. Do you say yes to it? Because if you don't say yes, if you lose that opportunity, oh, you are it's over. 
Okay. Yeah, I, can't, I can't say that it's not ever going to be demonstrated again, but I, got, I have to believe in my heart that it's that much harder. Wait, wait, the which is that much harder? I'm saying if, if it shows up and you say no, oh, oh. it's going to be that much harder for it to show up again. I, that's my gut feel. I don't know if that's real. It is, it is real. And I really appreciate you brought up two important things and help me remember to speak about them. One is fear and the other one is this. Then yes. Saying yes, the courage to say yes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yes. That's, you know, and do you remember the, we had a year of yes many years ago. We did an entire year yeah. of yes. It was so great. So a couple things. One, and the yes is what's plugged into a sweet spot. There is a sweet spot when you and I have an opportunity. And it is absolutely critical that when that energy is up, that we tell God, bear with me with this language your yes is the way you tell god you're not afraid mm, okay you say yes so god says okay because sometimes we think we want things and then it shows up and it looks a little maybe prickly but we have to re in our own minds god knows god's cool but in our own minds, we have to remember, I said yes to this. I, do, I am declaring right now that this is acceptable. I, I haven't told the story in many, many years, but I want to tell it because it really, it's exactly what you're saying, Anita. I was, um, I used to go on these uh, meditation ret retreats with Michael Beckwith before he blew up and expanded. And we were, we would go into silent meditation for like the longest time. And during the meditation one day, what happened was my, my, my listening, my uh, auditory and my kinesthetic senses merged. That's the only way I can explain it to you. Suddenly, I began to feel things, not just hear them. I began to feel music in a way um, that landed in my entire body. So when a car goes down the street, I don't just hear it, I sense it. So, but what happened was when that happened at the retreat, I got terrified. It scared the living bejesus out of me. And I ran off into a little vest, a little stairwell, and I was crying because I was so frightened by it. But I suddenly also knew, and my intuition said, you wanted to be more plugged into life. This is it. This is the thing. Mm -hmm. You have to say yes. Mm -hmm. And I sat there just telling God, through tears, I'm saying yes, I'm saying yes, I'm saying yes. Yes, this is okay. I accept this. And it changed my engagement with people, with music, with life, with sounds, with the world, all around, because I was willing to say yes. When you have an opportunity, it, it, um, Anita's correct, there is, a, there is a golden moment. Say yes in that golden moment. Don't delay. Don't overthink it. Just mm -hmm. step through. Okay, great point, Anita. So yes means, you know, be conscious. The thing about fear, folks, that was a part, another part of the meditation I did this morning with, uh, at, at the lake. Fear is generated from the amygdala. It has a purpose. The purpose of fear is to keep you safe. Now, you and I, in all honesty, rarely run across anything to, that we truly need to stay safe from anymore. I don't know the last time any one of you has crossed the path of a bear or a poisonous snake or things like that. Now, maybe you have. You know, you probably have not been held up at gunpoint. But those are the kind of things that fear helps us to manage and stay safe from. Okay? What's happened though, in our world, we've collapsed into believing that certain things are a threat. And they, we have believed them so long, we don't know how to not react. And so what we, in our reaction, we tighten up our world and we close it down and we board off. 
the thing that we think is threatening, but the problem is when you're creating those walls, you're also boarding or warding off love. So you want to choose, <laughs> and you've heard me say this, you, you all know my fire walking story. You want to remember that you get to choose to subscribe. There are right and appropriate times to be fearful. I don't want to take that away from you. There are right and appropriate times, and, and for different reasons, you know, especially in this climate and in this country. But a lot of what you probably refer to as fear is made up stuff that you have subscribed to. The beauty of the science of mind says, I can look at my world and I can choose to think on God and not on the fear. I can let God pave my way. I can let spirit be my authority. And when I do that, I am lifted out of the doldrum, out of the limitation. And, and thank you for that word, Richard, because I've been using that lately. Then whatever is in the way is transmuted and it becomes fodder for my growth. Is that clear? That makes sense to everybody? See, there's no thing that is bad, but there are some things that we are limited by if we don't allow them to, to morph through us. We clear? Okay. So in this beauty, I, I, I've spoke longer than I wanted to, but I wanted to get you all involved too. And I, for those of you who shared, I really want to thank you. And I want to say to you that, as always, immerse yourself in the practice immerse yourself in the book in the reading in the teaching don't be a lazy science of mind student because you'll be missing the information that really supports you so let us stop what we're doing and get conscious right now with this spiritual mind treatment oh yes there is a power, a glory, a beauty, a love, an intelligence, a vibration, a sound. There is a whispering. All of these elements are the presence as me. And as I accept, a line open up and become all that it is. I recognize there is only the one as me, and I speak this word for each of us beautifully and powerfully. I declare that each person listening right now is moved, motivated, lifted, guided, and inspired to a healthier, more beautiful, more glorious, more freely expressed life on our, on our individual terms. I declare that the presence of this one of which we speak avails itself to, through, and as each person listening. There is no outside of this. There is no other of this. So any doubt or fear or confusion that could possibly be in the way, I also declare that all of it is uprooted, cast out, and neutralized, never again to be an authority in the life of any one of us. Right now, let us desire bigger, reach for more, and then accept the intelligence to activate that through our lives. Oh, this is good and so very good. I feel it, I sense it, I believe in it. With bountiful gratitude, I surrender this word and allow it to be so. And so it is.